The life which I now live in the flesh, I live what? By the faith of the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. That's a whole different thing than me trying to be a Christian. So I don't know where you're at this morning. Are you trying to be a Christian? Give it up. That's not how it works. God has made us new creatures in Jesus Christ. We're his children. He loves us with an everlasting love. You don't have to try to be accepted by God. You're already accepted because Jesus is accepted. If you're in him, you can't be any more accepted. We're fully accepted in him. So now we can look to him as our father. And know that he loves us and know that his whole being, his whole heart is to reach down and to give us the strength that we don't have. And to help us and to pick us up when we fall. And to love us and clean us off. Set us back on the path. Say, my child, just keep, on, keep looking to me. I've put in you everything that's needed. Take in the nourishment. Take in my word. Believe my word. Spend time with me. Look to me. Draw from me. Because what, what I have put within you will grow up to be just like Jesus. And it will happen. Not because of your fleshly effort. It will happen because of my purpose and my love and my provision for you. It's perfect. It's complete. Put your hope in him. And you'll be there on the other side in glory one day with me. Praise God. You know, this is a wonderful truth to uh, lay hold on to. If, if the Lord is working in your heart, bringing you to that place, that wonderful place of realization of what you are and, and your need and the depth of that need, it's such a wonderful truth to lay hold of that he's not calling you to be a Christian. He's calling you that you might give him your heart. That he might impart his life. And that you might in him not become a Christian, but become what you are in him. It's wonderful. Yes. This is a wonderful truth. You know, as, as God's children, as those that have come to the new birth and we're growing in him, I, I believe this is part of the Lord wanting to wean us off the breast, move us from milk to a little bit of solid food. He wants us to know the depth of his love and his power and the depth of what he has done when he redeemed us unto himself. He gave us his life. And, you know, as, as newborn babes, like the scripture says, and has been said this morning, we are to desire that sincere milk of the word. You know, I believe that's, that's one of the uh, characteristics of a child of God. They hunger for the Lord. They hunger for his word. And, um, and as that word comes, and it has its impact upon our hearts, our minds are transformed. We are, that, that newborn babe begins to think more well, it's becoming what it is. Beginning to think and realize that it's all in Him. It's all of Him. It's all for Him. And as, as I was listening this morning, you know, um, that, that Phil was speaking that it, it's a matter of proper diet and proper exercise. And God orders that for us. Thank God. He's the one that gives us our daily bread. And he's the one that orders our exercise. And you know, even as children of God, we're going to find ourselves failing. And we know that there are consequences to sin. That's just the way it is. But we, even in that, folks, we need to realize, first of all, let me ask you this. In all that you failed to do, have you gotten what you deserved? I mean, if we were to really receive the consequences of our sin, we wouldn't be here this morning. The only payment that could ever be made for our sins was made on the cross. The full wrath of our holy God was poured out on His Son who bore all of our sin. The price has been paid. And yes, there are consequences, but even in that, God is so merciful to us and so good to us. And not only that, he works the reaping.
together for our good because part of proper exercise is discipline. You know, we feed our children. Yes, we want them to get exercise and, and play and grow and grow strong. But, folks, if we really love our children, we're going to discipline them. The Word of God teaches us to do that. And He, as the perfect parent, disciplines us perfectly. And even in that reaping, He teaches us and disciplines us. How about His Son? His Son learned obedience by the things which he suffered. His son grew. His son became what he was when the father brought him forth in the manger. In the manger he was made like, made unto man, likeness of man. On the cross he was made like the sinfulness of man. All our sin was placed upon him. He became our Savior, our Redeemer, in the fullest measure possible, and it's, that is needed. So in our discipline, folks, and, and you know, let me ask you this. You, you think about Job. Was he reaping? I don't think Job wasn't, wasn't reaping. He wasn't doing for something necessarily wrong that he failed. Satan came before the Lord, and the Lord said, look at my servant Job. He loves me. He honors me. He walks with me. And Satan says, well, you let me lay my hand on him. He's, he's serving you because you're blessing him. Let me, let me touch him, and he'll curse you. So the Lord stepped back. Now, he had a rain on him. He says, you can't take his life. Even when he, when he came back and told him, well, let me touch his body. Let me afflict him. Then he'll curse you. He even permitted that. The Lord did. He stepped back that far, but he says, you can't take his life. And as God was working there, let me ask you something. Did he do something good and wonderful for Job? He suffered, yes. And he was disciplined, yes. But when it was all over, he says, Lord, I'd, I've heard of you. But now I see you, how wonderful you are. You're my God. You reign. And you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all I can ask or think. God made himself more real to Job. And Job grew into what he was in God. And that's what he is doing for us, folks. Through the power of his word, through his loving discipline, through the exercise he orders for us. It's not to condemn. That's Satan's business. It is to work in our hearts and lives and grow us up. I want to grow, don't you? I want, I want to desire every place every, in every area of my life that I need the sincere milk of the Word where I'm still a babe. I want it. I long for it. And I know that He is my Father is going to provide it. I, you know what, though? I believe that part of our growing in Him is coming to the place to realize that we need it and to ask for it. To ask for it. And to seek and keep on seeking. And to knock and keep on knocking. Lord, I desire the milk where I need the milk. I desire the solid food where I need the solid food. I desire the exercise, Lord, that I need. I need your discipline. Because you want to teach me your ways. And you want me to learn of your wonderful love and grace in a greater measure and grow in you. Folks, this is a wonderful truth this morning that we can rejoice in. That God is speaking to our hearts and telling us, I just want you to become what you are. Because I have made you what you are. You're a new creature. Praise God. We've got every reason to rejoice this morning and give Him praise and give Him thanks. He's working. Glory to God.